So, how are you on fall now? It's great, I actually really like it. I ended up really liking it. Um, have you had good turnouts like this? I think tonight went fairly well. Yeah, it's been pretty much like this. Yeah. <clears throat> and I, I missed you in, uh, in DC a few weeks ago. DC Although was, those two were there. It was pretty similar, wouldn't you say? Yeah, mm -hmm. it was very similar. Where are you going tomorrow? New York City. New York again, yeah. Where are you playing there? The Ritz. Was that a nice place? I didn't have a chance to get in there. Uh, I haven't been there yet. No. That's just tomorrow. Okay. How old is the old disco or something, was it? Mm -hmm. Don't know. Probably isn't everything an old disco, which was then an old rock club, you know. And they change from one thing to another. Just add lights. Are you going to Europe after this? Probably. I know there was somebody here who saw you in Italy. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. One time. We're working on it. Yeah. And how's, how's the reception over there? Is it any different than here? Well, apart from the fact that there's thousands there where there's hundreds here, it's pretty much yeah. the same. That's pretty wild. Well. Got to go to Europe to find people, huh? Jeez. Seems to always be that way. That doesn't say much for us. Oh, I don't know. Maybe it does say something for you. We seem to be kind of slow on picking up on new things. But they're just sometimes it seems that way with just everything over there. Yeah, I don't know why. Sometimes it seems that they're just like fashion berserk, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Up, is, that what, is that what you mean by everything? Yeah, just, I mean, it, yeah, it doesn't really matter what act it is. Like, I mean, I don't know how to say this. Yeah, I could be wrong, but from my small experience over there, it just seems like just more people tend to go to every show. Mm -hmm. You know, just whereas hundreds of you know, like thousands just show up to a lot of places to check things out. Mm -hmm. Do you prefer playing for the crowd over there or a small crowd like we have here? I don't care. Yeah. People are people. Mm -hmm. you know, they're listening and they yeah. hear it. Then yeah. 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 Ten people. That's that's the first answer like that I've ever gotten asking that question. Most people have a definite preference over what size crowd or what type of crowd. Well, they, a type of crowd they like to play. Sure. I don't like. Well, people. you don't like people throwing bottles. Right? Well, I don't like people. Yeah. It's not yeah. Really much fun to play for people also that we are hostile to you, but I mean, it hasn't ever really happened with us. Mm. Yeah, all we ask is that they be receptive. Well, no. they listen, they don't have to be receptive. But well, I thought that's what that meant. Mm. Just be open, I mean, you know, just like be open. Yeah. You know, preconceived ideas other than those they've conceived by seeing us before or hearing us or something. But no, no ideas shaped by outside forces like critics or mm. magazines or or um, their mates who was saw who had a friend who saw the band, you know. Mm. Or their cousins who had a brother who has whose sister's wife saw the band or something. Or anything for us to pass it. Right. Right. I understand. I, I think even listening to the records, you, you can't really get an idea of what the concert's going to be like because the energy is completely different. Yeah, yeah. So people ought to come and be open and not be swayed by any fashionable ideas. You met the residents in what year? When did all this start? About 71 when I first met them. How did that happen? Oh, I came over with a, with a guy from Austria that I met on holiday who heard about them. Nigel? Yeah. And, uh... We just lived together for a year, making very weird experimental sounds. He had an influence on uh, the residents in the Eskimo album. Yeah, uh huh. He sent tapes and things. Hmm. I just got a, a letter from Ralph mentioning that the residents just did more or less a surprise concert in Santa Monica a few weeks ago. Uh huh. And that it was kind of a rehearsal for. Uh, some concerts that were coming up. Is uh -huh. this, do you know if this is finally definite? I mean, it's been talked about for years now. It's pretty definite, I think. 
Yeah, yeah. I was wondering, um, why did you choose the David Jinx for my tuxedo, man? Um, yeah, that was a surprise. <laughs> yeah, that's one of my favorite songs. Well, we were on tour together and uh, in Europe, and some of us really got along very well together. And, and uh, the guy that plays the violin with tuxedo moon would come on stage uh, during our set and sing with us sometimes, sometimes play some violin with us. And after the end of the tour, we split up and went our own separate ways. And uh, we were playing in Amsterdam together. So we th thought we'd surprise old Blaine by uh, playing Jinx. It's a real double. We learned it in about a quarter of an hour. And uh, he came to, to Amsterdam to see us, to check us out playing. And uh, we asked him how he'd like to sing his own song, only with a better band. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't believe it, he was absolutely knocked out. So he came on and sung Jinx. And it was such a gas that we that we've uh, played it pretty much on and off ever since then. And he had a he had an accident a little while ago in, in Amsterdam and got his hand damaged, so it's kind of a sort of memorial to him. The, the whole band is now living in Amsterdam? Uh no, not anymore. They're living in Belgium I believe somewhere. Speaking of accidents, you had an accident a while back or something in Australia. Yeah, I was just ill and now I'm okay again, so no harm done. Mm. Rumors were of a heart attack and this and that. Yeah, I know. Someone told me that the rumor initially was I was dead. <laughs> the rumors of his death have been greatly exaggerated. Obviously. <laughs> no, I, I, I never heard that. But only by 10%. <laughs> <laughs> mm. You said Blaine sang that song? In the video, Mr. Winston. Yeah, uh-huh. But Blaine... Or Blaine, was it his song? Yeah, well it's all their song, I believe. They all wrote it together. But, uh, Blaine's got a great voice. I think Blaine's got the best voice in Tuxedo. Why am I saying all this? You, you don't need to hear this. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> There's another thing I was wondering. The um, two songs that you did with um, I Love You Too Much To Respect You and uh, when I saw you in <clears throat> the 9.30 Club, you did uh, uh, was it Broken Man's Heart Is A Ghetto? Uh -huh. um, is there any plans to put that on uh, vinyl or I love you too much to respect you. I just wrote a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I pretty much plan to put that on the next album, I should think. But um, that is when we decided who we're going to record the next album for. Mm -hmm. I don't think I don't think I'll be uh, recording Corrupted Man's Heart as a Ghetto. It was it's already been done pretty nicely by the guy that wrote it, mm -hmm. which wasn't me. Who was? Uh, there's a reggae guy called Pablo Moses. I don't know if you ever heard of him, but as, as reggae goes, he's pretty much about the best there is. Hmm. No, I have. I'm very hungry. Hmm. Uh, you said you don't know who he'll be recording the next album for? No, it would probably, chances are good that it's not going to be Ralph, though. Why is that? Well, I just, I, they, they just don't have the money, I don't think. They just don't have the money. Mm. All they can do is basically concentrate on trying, trying to get something happening with the residents. So at least the residents can survive on Ralph, you know. And they've been very helpful and everything. And, uh, you know, they just realize that it's, that they stretch it's themselves still. a bit too far. Yeah. The eyes, um, appearances are that they're doing pretty good. So I guess that's not true, but you think they've just took on too many bands and whatnot? Yeah, yeah I'm not sure. they definitely did. They're pretty much cutting that back now. In what way have, has anyone officially left the label? Yeah, exactly, other than yeah. There's, there's everyone. That's 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 exactly. Yeah. There's, there's uh, the residents and Snakefinger. Really? Huh. And uh, Snakefinger is on the... Uh, Snakefinger must find a new label because there's a... One residence is quite enough. I don't want to be another residence. I don't. 
my my aims aren't that obscure. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't feel the need to be that obscure. They're mm -hmm. already that obscure, mm -hmm. and, and uh, there's no need for two people to be that way. I'm basically doing something that's quite different. And what I'm and, and what I'm doing, part of what it, what it is, is that it has to reach a goodly amount of people to be worthwhile, and it has to uh, it has to influence things. I sent a picture to Ralph back in uh, Halloween. We dressed up. And tuxes and eyeballs, as you can see, we only have the eyeball there. Four of us went to all the parties. Me and him and two well, What were they made of? These eyeballs. Uh, it was a plastic, clear globe, and we took them and cut out a hole, spray painted. Cut out a hole in the middle of them. No, cut out a hole for the head, oh. for the neck, because they were two. You know, they went yes. together, sealed all the way around. So we cut out a half on each side for our neck. Oh, I see. And then it pins on at the side. You can't. I don't know if you can see the pins on there. I see. Yeah, yeah. So How was it inside that? It was very hot. hot. <laughs> How much <laughs> space did you have around? There was plenty of space. I mean, they, they were they were about this big. Did you have like a harness so they didn't just like roll around? Well, yeah, we did put some foam like up on the top uh -huh. of them, and that kind of gave us some stability. Yeah. Uh -huh. But it was a hell of a lot. I just wondered because like I just remembered the the residential ones mm -hmm. and what a tricky design job it was and how expensive and how difficult it actually was to get that to get those one around mm -hmm. so they could walk around and it would be relatively comfortable you know and, and relative is yeah, is the the key yeah. <laughs> ours costs about 10 bucks a piece to me yeah, but you, well, sweat, you sweat to well you sweat and yeah. it's cold I'm outside sure the steam are sweating in there yeah yeah of course they are how are your visuals i mean what we the the pupil you cut out the pupil no no the pupil we didn't put any paint on it it's left clear and we put a piece of black mylar on the inside such that it was more like sunglasses. We could see out of them, but because they're dark on the inside, nobody could see in. It was perfect. So it was it was clear that plastic. Yes. Yeah, that's very clever. Saved a lot of money. You did. <laughs> yeah, well, not really. We spent it on the tuxes. Yeah, we were well, uh, occupational as a well, yeah. being a resident. The two people that I saw you when I saw you in I guess it was November of '80, a while ago in Washington when you were a four piece uh -huh, uh -huh. and you had uh, I believe the same drummer and bass player yeah that's right who are what are their names again George B. George and Bong Hit Ryan Bong Hit Ryan yeah. yes how did you hook up with them I, I think at the time they were at least I had heard 